let's talk about something that we haven't talked about in a while throughout this chapter and in almost all the videos you might have seen some large chains of numbers and in these chains these numbers are being multiplied to each other this chain goes from 4 to 1 and we have a lot of other chains look at this one look at this one and this 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 okay we have names for these chains which is why we're making this video and as you might have already guessed from the title of this video these are called factorials now how do we write them we use the largest number of the chain and put an exclamation mark after it so this is called 9 factorial and this means that we have a chain that goes from 9 all the way to 1 you're multiplying all the natural numbers from 9 to 1 so now you know what factorials are thanks for watching the video see you in the next one i'm just kidding while we're here let's spend a little more time with this factorial let's start by practicing noticing them this is 4 factorial this is 4 factorial this one is 11 factorial 10 factorial 11 factorial 7 factorial 9 factorial 12 factorial 5 and 4 and this one is 10 factorial this one has 9 factorial and 4 and 3 and even 2 factorial now because they're so common in our calculations let's try figuring out the values for some of them let's find the values of the first 7 factorials we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 factorial pause the video this will be a good practice try finding the values of all 7 factorials okay let's do it together one factorial is just one because you start with one and you end at one two factorial means you start with two three factorial means you start with three four factorial means you start with four and so on so one factorial is one two factorial is two three factorial will be three times two factorial so this means three times two that's six four factorial is four times six that's 24 five factorial is five times 24 the previous value that's 120 6 factorial is 6 times 120 that's 720 and 7 factorial is 7 times 720 that's more than 5000 that's going to be 5040 so these are your values for the first seven factorials i'm not asking you to memorize them i just want you to practice calculating factorials for a few of them and just a quick note zero factorial is by definition one and i know this sounds very strange but i promise i'll make a video on this some other time for now we're just getting a basic idea of what factorials are here's another thing that you might observe this sequence grows very very fast look at the speed at which these numbers are growing at 4 we are at just 24 and at 7 we have already crossed 5000 and lastly simple laws of addition don't work for this operator you can't have 3 factorial and add 4 factorial to it to get 7 factorial this will not work 3 factorial is 6 Four factorial is twenty-four. If you add them, you get thirty, not five thousand forty. All right. What else can we talk about that will be useful for you? One tip that I can give you is how do we simplify factorials? You might have seen factorials in both numerators and denominators. Let's look at one of them. We have eight factorial by six factorial. There's no need to calculate both these factorials and then divide. There's a lot that gets cancelled. Look at this. Eight factorial is eight to one. and then 6 factorial is 6 to 1 you can see that this chain 6 to 1 is also here in the numerator 6 to 1 this entire chain gets cancelled and all we are left with is 8 times 7 that's 56 this is how i do it i think of the chain that starts with 8 and then i'm dividing it with a chain that starts with 6 so i'll stop before 6 i'll only take 8 and 7 so 8 times 7 that's 56 let's look at one more 8 factorial by 6 factorial 2 factorial so let's use what we just learned 8 factorial by 6 factorial that's 8 times 7 divide that by 2 that's going to be 28 and sometimes there are equations that involve factorials let me show you one of them 1 by 6 factorial plus 1 by 7 factorial that's equal to x by 8 factorial now you can pause the video try this on your own this won't take a lot of your time the largest of these factorials will be our lcm This means 8 factorial includes 7 factorial and 6 factorial. So to get rid of things in the denominator, we can multiply both the sides by the largest factorial. In this case, we have 8 factorial. So multiplying by 8 factorial on both sides, this is what we get. We have 8 factorial by 6 factorial plus 
8 factorial by 7 factorial that's equal to simply x and we have just learned how to figure this out 8 factorial by 6 factorial that's 8 times 7 8 factorial by 7 factorial that's just 8 so 56 plus 8 x is equal to 64 one final note sometimes you might see some formula in your textbooks I want you to get better at figuring out things on your own rather than relying just on formulae but because these formulae are all over the place in almost all the textbooks I am just presenting a few of them on the screen. So let's look at this one L O V E we have to make four letter words and repetition is not allowed. So the number of ways will be four times three times two times one and now we know that's four factorial. So the number of ways to rearrange four distinct objects that's four factorial and if you want to generalize this the number of ways to rearrange n distinct objects that's going to be n factorial. Now I don't call this a formula, I call this an observation. This is something that we've been seeing in almost all our videos. Some also call this permutation. So I'm not even going to write that word down. Let's move on. Here's one more formula that you might see in your textbooks. For situations like these where there are a lot of repetitions, this is what we have to do. The numerator is 11 factorial and in the denominator we have 4 factorial, 4 factorial and 2 factorial and if we generalize this in the case where there are repetitions we use n factorial that's the total number of letters divide that by all the corrections that we have seen. So if i appears 4 times we use 4 factorial if we have something that appears p times we'll have p factorial and if you have something q times that's q factorial and if you have something r times that's r factorial and so on. We can keep dividing and keep correcting Again, some call this a formula. I don't believe that's the case. 